Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, my name is Raven and welcome back to my channel. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2 and we have a whole lot to cover. So I'm going to try and condense everything as much as possible. And I'm going to try my best not to go like off the rails with talking about stuff because if I do, we're going to be here for quite a long time. But first of all, before I get into it, I just want to say it was really fucking amazing to see some actual Destiny 2 gameplay. I was absolutely blown away and it reminded me a whole lot of like Halo 1 and 2, especially the storyline it really reminded me of uh, Halo 1 in a way but before I get into too much detail about that and every single thing that we know so far about Destiny 2 what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disappear I'm gonna roll for you guys the official trailer and the gameplay footage so for anyone who has not seen it yet you guys can check it out and then I will come back and I will let you in on everything that we know so far so see you guys very very soon For as deep and wide as humanity's rivers have run, it has now been reduced to a precious few, needing something to believe in and a place to call home. This is what we have been called to, the future that we fight for, the future we will protect. Shaped by the fires of each new battle, we are forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. What we have built is only the beginning, a symbol what we can achieve, of who we are, and our great purpose here. But the day may come when we will be tested, when all we hold dear is threatened. And then we'll see what each of us is truly made of. If you tell me this is a practical joke, well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing you, Cade, is the easiest thing I'll do all day. Let's get serious, people. Zavala, this is my serious face. Can't you tell? Ikora, what have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defense systems. And comms have been spotty for the last few hours. Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Hmm. Maybe it's just the storm. Maybe it's... What are the set feeds telling us? Nothing. Well, that's good, right? No. I mean, they're not there. There are no satellites. And that's not good. Battle stations!
back there. This line until the last civilian is safely away. Guardian you never showed up about? generator should be at the bottom of the ship.
The shield generator should be straight ahead. So guys, as you can see, it's looking pretty goddamn fucking cool. The cinematics are once again amazing. They've been doing a great job with the cinematics, but the actual gameplay, the transition from the cinematics to the gameplay was fucking seamless. And the new engine looked amazing with all the new rain effects going on, the blur on the top of the screen whenever like the ship was flying past. It, the whole game in general just looked fucking cool. Now, one thing I want to go over quickly, and this is one of the points from what we've been hearing from people who were at the event and got to actually play. Apparently the PC version looks absolutely amazing when it comes to the graphics and like literally kicks the shit out of the consoles once again we knew this was going to happen the pc is just way ahead of consoles in general when it comes to graphics of course the pc is going to be running at 60 frames per second the pc version will basically have everything you expect from a pc game especially a pc mmo now i'm going to kick it off with the biggest piece of news right now for me at least this was fucking huge i was sitting in my chair i was laid back i was sort of like yeah this is really cool enjoying the stream and then the uh, activision guy came out and sort of a announced this and it blew me away i actually like sort of sat up from my seat i'm like no fucking shit and that is the fact that the pc version of destiny 2 will be exclusive to battlenet that's right it's going to be on the blizzard launcher and only the blizzard launcher it's not going to be on steam now this is going to piss a lot of people off of course but at the same time uh it's going to be pretty damn cool and there's a couple of reasons why it's a really cool thing so first of all let's go for the uh cons of it being exclusive to the battlenet launcher now yes i know it's not battlenet anymore but i'm calling about it because I've been following Blizzard games since fucking Warcraft 2, so it's bad on it to me. Now, one of the obvious downsides is it's not going to be on Steam, and of course, people they love Steam for the pure fact that they have their entire library of games there. Most people like logging onto Steam and they like being able to just buy purchase games from there, and it's simple, it's one place for all their games type deal. So that's obviously a con. If you're looking to buy it on Steam, looks like it's not going to be happening, and that kind of sucks a little bit. I thought it was going to be on Steam, that's why this caught me just like completely off guard. But now let's get into the pros of why it's a good thing that's on the Blizzard. Blizzard launcher. Number one, Blizzard servers are stable as fuck. Now, for the longest time, yes, whenever um, a new World of Warcraft expansion launches, of course, certain things go away sometimes. The servers crash, there's long queues, da 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 da. But at the same time, after that, the servers are fucking solid. So it gives me great confidence that when Destiny 2 launches, I'm not going to have to deal with heaps of server issues and the type of bullshit that you normally deal with whenever you go with brand new games that basically try and make their own launches and all that sort of stuff. You play, I'm looking at you. It's going to be a good reassurance to know that basically the servers that they're going to be running on are going to be Blizzard servers or they're going to lease them from Blizzard. Let's be honest. Either way, they're going to have really fucking good servers. Number two, Battle.net is really fucking easy to use, okay? Out of like Origin and you play and all these sort of things, Battle.net is probably the smoothest one for me personally using it. Like it's even smoother to use than Steam, okay? You go, you basically just open up the Battle.net client. It has the games there. You click on the game you want to play. You press play. You're in the game. Nice and fucking simple and it never lets you down. That's one thing I like about Battle.net. It, and I'm happy that you know Destiny 2 is going to be on the Battle.net client. Alright guys, so now moving on to some more stuff that's being introduced into the game. Finally, the game will have raid matchmaking. That is right, in Destiny 1, in order to basically matchmake for raids, you had to use a third party sort of software, go outside the game, go to Reddit, all that sort of stuff to find people, which is really fucking stupid. It was one of the major things that turned me off Destiny in the first place, so I'm really happy that they have raid matchmaking in Destiny 2. It's just a thing that the game needs to fucking have, and finally they have it. Took them a while, but at least they have it now. Next up we have brand new guns okay now in the gameplay footage like i said they showed this weird fucking bioshock grenade launcher type thing which i absolutely fucking love that thing was cool and they showed a mini gun that mini gun i was just like holy shit like everyone in the background was like like cheering because they saw the mini gun it was fucking amazing and i love mini guns so it's going to be quite fun to be rocking around with a fucking mini gun so now it looks like that they're having a three like tier weapon slot system so instead of it being like you know sniper rifles just locked to your secondary weapons and stuff like that it looks like you're gonna be able to put basically whichever weapons you want in these slots and you can just sort of like choose whatever weapon you want and they sort of said that themselves during the stream they said that we want players to be able to pick a weapon they like and use it instead of players being locked out because they like two weapons but they both occupy the same slot it looks like now you can sort of like you know choose the weapons you want to play with and actually use the fucking things so they've gotten rid of the whole orbit thing so the way that they said it works now is if you're on a planet and you want to travel to another planet all you have to do is pull up the map it has a brand new 
new map. I'll get into that in a second. And then you pick whichever landing pad you want on the different planet, click it, and you go straight there, which is pretty damn fucking cool because the whole orbit thing, let's be realistic at this point, it's a bit of a fucking, it's a meme. It's sort of like whenever you think of Destiny, you think about you're sitting in orbit fucking doing nothing, playing with your dick. So it's good to see that thing disappearing and hopefully there'll be, it'll be a lot more seamless, the whole transitions between, you know, planet to planet. Like I said, I want this game to be a full-blown MMO like World of Warcraft. Minimal loading screens, no more trying to hide the fact there's a loading screen by just making you watch a ship float through orbit, okay? Next up, there's going to be a proper fucking storyline. Thank you. Fuck, this is a thing. The first Destiny, I was enjoying the storyline a lot, actually. I got up until the end of the first Destiny, and then the storyline just ended, and they're like, cool, wait for the next expansion and go fucking do strikes and patrols and shit. That really fucking rubbed me the wrong way because I wanted to continue with the storyline, and the fact it just ended really pissed me off, okay? So I am happy that they're having a full-blown storyline, and it reminded me of Halo 1 and 2. Just the whole vibe of it, it looked like Halo on steroids, which was quite cool. Next for the PC, there will be uncapped frame rates, okay? So you'll be able to basically uncap your frame rate and get as high as you want to go with all that sort of stuff. And the game will also have remappable controls, so keep that in mind. Up next, the brand new classes will have brand new ultimate abilities. So the Titan, he spawns a giant fucking Captain America shield and he can obviously like shield bash people, but he can also throw it like Captain America and it will bounce off mobs and like, you know, return to him. It's pretty damn cool. The Hunter class will have a sort of like electric staff sort of thing. He'll sort of like pop and he'll do all these flips and hit people. That one was a bit of a letdown. For me personally, the Hunter class in general, from what they showed, it could get better, but from what they showed, it sort of looks a bit lackluster. They don't look as cool as the Titan or the Warlock and they sort of look a little bit lackluster in just their armor and of course they're like it does look cool him flipping around and stuff but once again I think they could have gone something a little bit cooler and in my opinion the Warlock has the best ultimate ability okay so what they do is they rip out this giant fucking sword it lights on fire they float up into the air they can then float through the air and they can just rain down these giant fiery fucking energy waves to the ground which kills anything it touches basically they can also then slam into the ground which will fuck anything up below them and then float back up into the air and keep like you know raining down hell they all look really really cool but the hunter looks a little bit lackluster in uh, my eyes up next guys there will be four planets to explore Explore, okay, so there will be earth and three other planets. There'll be one planet that's apparently really steeped in lore when it comes down to it I think that might be one of the later level planets and there is a planet that is entirely covered in water And the last planet is one that has been taken over by the enemy and is turned into a giant like mining factory facility type thing So all the planets they look really damn cool and it's gonna be quite interesting to explore them Like I said, I hope it's like an MMO no more instance bullshit like the first one I hope you can literally just go anywhere you fucking want obviously not like scale mountains for no reason but if i want to just like you know run from one end of the planet to the other end of the planet without loading zones i should be able to do that okay my hope is that they go full mmorpg with this thing because i really want this game to turn out to be sort of like world of warcraft but in the destiny universe that would be fucking amazing Alrighty guys, so the game will now finally have a brand new map. So the game will have a map in it when it launches and the map will show you when and where um, social events are taking place. So not only will it show you that there's all these events going on and like missions and all this sort of stuff, but it will show you when they're actually happening. So no more guessing, no more trying to maybe half rock up to something. It will have a timer there telling you when stuff is going on. It will also show you these things called hidden sectors, okay? Now, hidden sectors are these places where you can explore. They're sort of like dungeons. I'm getting the feel that they're dungeons, okay? So it's sort of like dungeons out in the world that you can go and visit. And they have hidden bosses. They have hidden, like, treasure maps where you can sort of, like, seek out treasure. Apparently, the bosses will have keys on them that, of course, lead to loot. And to top it all off, guys, there will be NPCs littered out throughout the world. There will be brand new outposts everywhere. There will be NPCs in these hidden sectors that will give you quests. They'll give you side missions that you can go on and do stuff. They stress that there will always be stuff to do, okay? So no matter what, there's always going to be quests to do. There's always going to be these hidden sectors to explore. There's always going to be these social events going on. They said that they really want to make sure that you never run out of stuff to do. Whether you're a solo player or you have a group of people, you're always going to be doing stuff and we will hold them to that motherfucking statement. Now, they said that there will be a brand new strike and a brand new raid now the raid that they said will be coming out later on obviously like raids tend to do and i think they want to have some sort of event leading up to the certain raid which is fair enough and as for the strike people who were at the events they got to play the strike so if you go online you can basically find the brand new strike and you can have a look at it because they would definitely record some footage and put it up on their channels up next is clans that's right destiny 2 will have clans built into the game so no more once again third party bullshit where you have to go 
go outside of the actual game in order to find groups in order to make parties all that sort of shit it's now 100 in the actual game so you can customize your little clans however you want you can have like a clan banner clan emotes everyone who's in the clan can of course have like a little motto that they have next to their name and everything they apparently it's going to be pretty damn customizable which is quite cool because like i said nothing brings a clan together like customizing your shit okay now they said something else as well which i really like now they said whether you have only like you know two hours a week to play or you're on every single day for eight hours every single thing you do in the game will basically help reward every single person in your clan okay this is really cool because it actually feels like a clan you're working as a group everything you do is not for your own personal gain it actually helps out everybody now the reason why i really like this feature is because if you have a lot of time to play then you'll be helping out every single person in your clan a lot okay if you only have a little bit of time to play instead of just jumping on and feeling useless because you can't fucking keep up or do anything it doesn't matter because that little bit that you're doing still helps out every other person in your clan so if you're jumping on and you're doing a little bit of activities and getting a few rewards here and there that means that everyone else in your clan especially those guys who are putting in the fucking legwork will be getting those rewards too a little added bonus and of course you'll be reaping the rewards of these guys who are fucking putting in the man hours it's a nice system overall and it really makes the clan feel like an actual clan like you're working together in order to help each other out so overall the whole clan system that they have planned is a really good feature in my eyes now there is something interesting that they're doing when it comes to the clans as well once again i have no idea how this is going to pan out so we're just gonna have to wait and see with this so they have these things called guided games now the way guided games are going to work is if a solo player someone who just plays by himself doesn't go in the clan doesn't join guilds or whatever doesn't have friends to play with whatever the deal is okay if a solo player wants to do a raid what he can do is he can bring up the clan system okay he can switch through all the clans, have a look, he can read their mottos, and he can sort of accept or decline. If he accepts a clan, it will send a request to that clan that this person wants to join. So say if you have a clan and they need six people for a raid, okay, but they can only get five people because one of their members bails. What they can do is they can go through the guided game system, they can pick up an additional player, and then that guy can jump in, and of course they can take that person through the raid. Now this works for both parties, okay, because the person who is playing solo, who wants to actually see the raids, can actually get into the fucking raid and play the damn thing without having to go through the whole clan system without having to find people to play with all that jazz and it also works for the people who are in the actual clan because like i said without that six member they can't do the fucking raid so this way they can just bring someone else in temporarily and of course if the person ends up being really good they can invite them to the clan they can sort of put them on a friends list and bring them next time it just seems like a really good way to get the best of both worlds so the solo players can see the raids and stuff and of course the clans who end up short on people can get people people in without the hassle of once again going through a third party system and all that sort of stuff alrighty guys so now moving on to the last part of this video and we're going to be talking about pvp so pvp will be getting a brand new mode now i'm pretty sure from what they showed it's going to be like an elimination capture the flag type thing i could be wrong on that but the guy said something about actually controlling points and and to me that seems like a capture the flag capture the point uh type deal so once again brand new pvp modes is going to be pretty damn cool i played a whole lot of uh, pvp back in destiny 1 and it was heaps of fun so i'm looking forward to playing some more pvp when it comes to destiny 2 and the last piece of news for pvp is all pvp modes will be 4v4 now which is just it's a nice change 4v4 is a good number i like 4v4 so it's good to see that they're doing that and a 4v4 like you know capture the flag mode or whatever the brand new uh, mode is seems like it's going to be pretty damn cool Alrighty guys, and that's all the Destiny 2 news I have for you. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. I want to know your hype levels for this game. After seeing the gameplay and after seeing all the trailers and everything, are your hype levels through the fucking roof? Are you ready for this game? Have you already pre-ordered it? I really want to hear from you guys. I am very close to pre-ordering it. I just want to find out a couple more details in regards to the PC version before I go purchasing it. But I'm definitely going to be playing this game regardless when it launches. So, leave a comment down below and make sure you let me know your thoughts and if you want to see more videos from me please hit the subscribe button i shall see you all in the next video have a good one guys I